Today I'm going to talk a little bit about walleye patterns as the winter goes on. Now, this particular lake that I'm on is a big dish bowl lake. You know, it, it's fairly easy to figure out. You know, and I've fished it quite a bit over the years, and there's always, you know, every year you can go back kind of the same spots and catch fish. And according to the time of year and according to what's going on, they're normally in those spots. And this year it just has not been the case at all. It's been been very well the, the spots that I would normally catch fish on I haven't I don't think I've even marked a fish on them and I've bounced around a lot out here now like I said in the opener this year we've been facing a lot of warm wet weather no snow so the ice has not got as thick as normal plus we have not had the snow on the ice that we normally have I got one coming in here um, so you, you know you kind of go back and you got to figure out you know the why of the scenario why is this and why is that well you know first part of the year I'd fish one spot another another time of the year or, or as the winter went on I'd, I'd fish another spot and couldn't get nothing to go couldn't get nothing to go so I just I went out and I just started drilling holes started fishing different spots came across this spot and it took me a kind of a while kind of a brain dead move on my part being that I don't fish like this normally but it was I, I got we call it the weed bed spot and there's little patches of weeds on the bottom that are not very tall but being that there's no snow in the ice being the ice ain't overly thick you know those that grass and that and them weeds are still really green yet so all these walleyes have been really relating to these little tiny little weed beds and what the problem has been is I, I believe they've been on certain days they've been they've been patterned on different weed beds that are around here because these weed beds are not very big so you know we've tried about everything the fish have been very finicky since about the first of the year and it is I believe March 10th today I've spoke with a, a, a bunch of people I know and they've kind of said the same thing it's not just this lake but other lakes it's been very finicky very very finicky and trying to figure out why trying to figure out when you know one of the most active it's been quite the challenge and it'll humble you uh, really quickly and but I do love that because it makes me think it, it makes me learn more so the frustration part has been a learning part so it, it's been good and as I said in the opener also <laughs> I'm completely by myself today because I my son is I believe getting kind of burnt out my wife is a little bit burnt out on it uh, so I came out here myself today going okay I got I got an idea what to do so I got out here way before daylight got set up it's supposed to get really warm today. I believe it's like 30 degrees right now. It's supposed to get into almost 60. So, of course, you want to get out here and get that good, real good, solid morning bite in before it starts getting warmed up and then get the heck off of here. But, but I'm believing these, I, I'm right off where the shallow water is. I'm right off to the side of where that shallow water is. And these fish are kind of just going back and forth here right now. I've marked quite a few fish, but only got one to go so far. But normally this time of year, I would be at the mouths of, of little bays or little creeks or, or whatever that comes in and out of this out of this lake. And every spot that I normally fish, you know, say this time of year, it, there's no fish in them. It's just they're not holding fish. And the reason I, I would fish, I got one coming up here. I would fish, you know, close to a mouth of a bay or close to a, some real shallow water is... You know, it's getting that time of year where these walleyes are going to start migrating up into the shallows and get ready to start spawning. So you normally get, you know, a, a lot of fish around, and it's a lot of fun, but they're just not there right now. So I, I don't know if they're going to change their pattern for spawning, too, or if they're just going to make a late run over there. But regardless, I'm kind of still trying to figure that out, and we'll find more of that out as, as the winter goes on here, or as the spring, I should say, goes on. But... You know, right now I'm just going to sit back and kind of enjoy, 
seeing if I can catch a few walleyes this morning here and I got two on my Garmin right now that just will not I had the one come up and chased me up for about five six feet and then he kind of hunkered back down so I might switch to a spoon right off the bat here and and see what happens being I've had quite a few fish come in and nothing has hit so far but stay tuned I'm hopefully gonna bring some fish back to you or hopefully catch a few fish for you here and hopefully teach myself something and hopefully also you so stay tuned I'm gonna get after it and hopefully I put a smack down on walleyes here and have a good time got one coming in here doesn't look too big but looks a little bit aggressive oh came up and he snapped right at it and swiped at it and missed I don't think he's anything to brag about here it comes again oh boy this is a better one wow this is a lot better than what I thought that is for sure not a giant but he's still better than what I thought he was down there he's a solid I don't know 15 incher I suppose solid 15 incher not gonna keep any today so let this one go back We've got plenty of fish in the freezer so nice start coming in he's fired up he came up and just swiped at it and missed but he's still coming make him really chase it there we go and this is just a little shyster wow but I got him to come up just a little shyster though that's another problem we've been running into this winter is a lot of small fish also a lot of small fish but there's been big ones mixed in there what I'm ultimately hoping for is to get a, a real nice one today, but we'll see what happens. But yeah, can't do much with that one. Oh, I got him to raise up a little bit. Just not enough. He's not charging. As you can see what this fish is doing right here. And there's my jigging, the slap wrap. You can really tell what these fish have been doing. They've just been hovering right on bottom and just once in a while they'll come up and kind of take a quick look and go right back down and they kind of disappeared. And the reason they disappeared is because right over top of where we're at is only is weeds probably six to eight inches tall is all. So some of these fish can really go in there and sometimes all you see is their back coming through, coming through those weeds and, and it's just times they won't come out so that's kind of why I use a slap wrap even when it's when they're kind of lethargic just because it's got a little rattle and a little bit of flash to where they can kind of see it and every once in a while you'll, you'll have a couple come in they'll just fly in and absolutely devour it so that's the way it goes Two coming up after me. This one, there we go. That one hit. I don't think he's very big. I had two coming up after me, and he hit. Nope, just another little guy, but just another little guy. But he T boned that thing. Just a little fella. Wow. Now that's getting frustrating with these smaller fish, but. It's not, not what we're looking for. He's coming back up. What's he going to do here? Just mess with me again? Come on. Nope. 
Ooh. Come on, there we go. Finally got him. Just another small one, though. God dang. Oh. This is why this year's been so frustrating, besides having all the, you know, all the finicky fish or trying to even find fish for that matter is you know just a lot of small ones just a ton I mean whew. got this one coming up I'm using a slab wrap to get going here on this rod I'm using now we got three fish on here and might have to go to some kind of spoon, but I really like starting off with a slap wrap as far as, you know, locator baits go, but it uh, looks like they kind of went down to the bottom, but I'm using three rods today. Uh, the state I'm in, we can use four, but I normally only fish two. I usually fish a dead stick and, and my jigging stick here, but being the fishing has been the way it's been, I got three out today just to try try a few different things you know up your odds just a little bit but it's been tough it's been it's been a grind to say the least but what do you do but this first rod I'm putting down under a bobber oh, come here is a see it there it's just a pink and white gense worm and what I'll do is I won't hook it by the face kind of like some of those horizontal baits do I will come through and hook it on the hard spot by the back of the tail so it kind of hangs kind of hangs like this here well once it gets down there it'll hang kind of like that but that minnow can still really swim freely, really move around yet, but he's got a lot of action to him, but yet he can't move around a whole lot with that with that weight on him, with that jigger, you know, with that jig head on him. So, you know, there's some days that works really great, and you know, of course, some days not. But I get this one down here, and then show what I'm using on my other dead stick here. Get this one out of the way. They seem to be, the fish have either seem to be on a real active presentation like the slap wrap or it's been, you know, on a small demon spoon like this. So, you know, I'll switch off between the two, but I'm going to use this one for a dead stick for right now and I'm going to put it on, and I hook the minnows the same way as I do with that other jig I just showed you, but I'm going to hook through the tail here. The reason I do that, for a couple reasons, is because minnows can swim around real well. Plus, you're in that hard spot of that tail, and that minnow doesn't fall off nearly as easy. But, using a rod rocker, and I don't know if anybody has these or anybody uses them, but I tell you what, they are a lifesaver. You just drop your bait down to the bottom, get it set to where you want it, you know, and then this rod will sit balanced just like this on it. And then when you get a fish, of course, the rod will just kind of go down like that. And you'll never lose your rod because it's hooked on there really well. So this has been, for years, this has been a, a I don't want to call it a presentation, but rod holder, per se, that has been just dynamite. Don't got to worry about a bobber. Don't got to worry about any of that. Now, normally, if... You're not using like, you know, today I'm using a Garmin. So if you don't have a Garmin to see where exactly where that bait is at, you know, either you can just drop it all the way to bottom and then reel it up a little ways once you hit bottom, or you can put a bobber stop on it and set it just like a bobber and then have that, the knot for that bobber stop, you know, right at the top of the ice so you know exactly where the bottom is at. Then once you lay your rod down, you can reel it up you know, so that bobber stop is is the distance from the top of the ice to the bobber stop itself. 
and it'll, it'll tell you how far off bottom you are of course so it works really well I, I really like this presentation and every once in a while I just kind of reach over and tap the bottom of the rod or the back of the rod and it'll I got another fish down here but tap the bottom of the rod to give it a little a little jerk or a little jig and I've caught a lot of fish off that I've caught God I've caught hundreds of thousands of fish off that off that setup with this rod rocker and all it is is that yellow piece of metal I showed you and then take a 2x12 or 2x10 and then they go right in the bottom of that so the other one I'm using for jigging right now pink and white slap wrap uh, and of course you can kind of tell that my favorite color for for fishing through the ice is pink uh, I don't know why that is but it is that's the way it's gone I mean my goodness I just had four fish come in follow it up I gave them a couple different actions uh, I changed up my cadence a little bit they all came up they'd follow it all the way up you know six eight feet off bottom fire up like they're gonna hit it and they just come up to it and they go right back down it's been this kind of the story of the year but here comes a comes another one here this may be a little bit bigger fish this may be a little nicer fish here I actually got two coming in. One's on my, the bigger one's on my dead stick. I mean, just all over it. I can't even see it on the garment anymore. He's just all over it. I don't want to do nothing to spook him off, but that's all he's doing is coming up and nosing it or looking at it here but it looks like a decent fish I'll go ahead and drop my slap wrap on the bottom and oh he's he's firing he's firing there we go finally got a better one to go here it's like another one of those eh, 16s maybe 17s Finally got a better one to go here. There we go. Oh, yeah. There's a nicer fish, finally. Finally got a beautiful 17-incher to go here. Worked it and worked it and worked it, but it's been a frustrating morning. It's been a frustrating year, but... Sure satisfying when you get a couple of them to go. Got a real good one coming in here. this fish over 10 feet off bottom he's wheeling back around is he going to make another run at it oh lord almighty let's drop him down and see if we can get him to recommit here This is insane. This is insane what these fish are doing. I brought this up, fish up three different times. I'm trying to get him to go is another story. This looks like a little bit better fish here. Cannot get him to go though. Finally 
got him to go. This is a better fish here. This is a better fish again here. There. Oh yeah, light night. A lot nicer fish. You know. <laughs> I've worked and worked and worked and worked and worked this fish. Run him up the fourth time, run him up off bottom. And, you know, when they decide to go, look at that. I mean, he just chowed that. Just absolutely chowed it. Looks like more nicer fish coming in again. Try to get this one unhooked. There we go. Just absolutely T-bone that. There comes more fish flying in. My God, the screen is full of loaded, full of fish. Oh, this is better fish. Oop! Swiped at it and missed. It's gonna come back again. Oh, there we go. Yes. This is another another better fish that just fired up. Just fired up. There's a lot of them that come in and chase but wouldn't do a thing. They chase, chase, chase. But another solid fish again. I mean not a solid 15 incher. Really good eaters. A lot of fun. A lot of fun when they come when they're coming like that. Just fire in and just slam it. Well, the fish are kind of slowed down now, but it's been a, overall a really good morning. I've had my uncle out here all last week. From he's from Montana, and it's was tough, tough. I mean, he gave me he gave me crap all week about how how crappy of a guide I was, and and uh, I went out there last October and went elk hunting with him and had just an an amazing time and and he did an amazing job getting me on elk so trying to return the favor by getting him into walleyes and it didn't fare so well but um, I guess all I can say right now is uncle if you're watching this you should have stayed one more day because it's been a great morning and uh, and glad you could come out glad you could come out and spend the spend the week with me here even though the fishing was fairly slow but I wish you would have stayed one more day and, and got into this fishing like I did today. And that when I come back out in September and go bow hunting for elk, maybe I'll try just a little bit harder. But like I said before in the opener, you know, this, this pattern has been completely off, <coughs> excuse me, all year. And now that kind of kind of got the pattern figured out a little bit you know it's been better still isn't as good of course as what a guy like to see but today I, I think I've caught in around 20 walleyes a lot of smaller ones but you know I caught some decent ones too but that's kind of way it goes but you know if we did find fish they wouldn't they wouldn't go they were finicky they'd either swim right on by or they'd stop and look I mean it, it was it was a frustrating winter but now I put this pattern together and I'm still trying to figure out, besides the weeds, why they're still sitting here. You know, they should be getting closer to bays and shallower water to where their spawning areas to get ready to spawn. I mean, it's going to be a little bit before they spawn yet, but normally, like on this lake particular, they're, they are within, you know, 100 to 200 yards from where they spawn at this time of year. And, you know, there is a sunken road bed that's not too far you know, so maybe they go up on that road bed and spawn, but I, I think that road bed's like eight, nine feet, uh, maybe six feet. I'm not 100% sure. I've never fished on top of it, but, you know, I don't know if that's the deal, if, if they're going to spawn there, but of course I haven't caught any big females here either. They've all been smaller males. So this pattern has been, has been a lot different than years prior, but, 
you know, I, I guess the scheme of things now is you know, just be happy. I got into fish, I guess, and and uh, had a, had a good day after all the after all the hard work and all the miles spent and the time spent and the work put into it and and we finally got on something and and made something come together and you know that old saying hard work pays off well it, it does it pays off so you know like i said also you know vision hunting is a sport not just you know the physical part of it you know th this is physically demanding setting everything up and taking everything down and whatever else but what I mean by it's a sport is if you want to get better at a sport you practice every day practice 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 and that's that's what I mean by by this being a sport is you just got to practice and get better keep practicing and getting better and you know it'll start coming around you know this this walleye fishing is is one of the hardest games to play and and as soon as you got them figured out they pull something on you and and kind of make you feel like you don't know nothing about them but and that's what I enjoy about it. I, I don't need to go out and catch a whole pile of fish to have a good day. If I can just figure out, you know, what they're doing, where they're at, what they want. I mean, that's that's what I get an enjoyment out of. And it's it's just been, days like today are just a riot. I, I wish my son and my wife would have came with. Of course, I just text my wife and told her that she should have came with I'm having a great day and of course she says of course you know since she ain't with but it's been a very fun day I'm going to try it here for just a little bit longer then I'm going to pack up and head home and spend the day with my with my wife and kids but <clears throat> sorry Uncle Chad really wish you had a day had a day like today but I will send you the video when it comes out and I get this uploaded and you can watch it and see what kind of day you could have had so not to rub it in, but yeah, kind of rubbing it in a little bit. And plus, it's proof I'm not such a bad guy after all. You just got to be patient sometimes. So I'm going to give it just about another half hour. It's roughly, it's about 10 to 9 now. I'm going to give it about another half an hour, 40 minutes, and then I'm going to pack up and, and head home here. So hopefully get a couple more topside before I do. Really good morning, actually. <clears throat> it's been one of those years that just won't seem to ever end, it seems like. But, you know, that's kind of what the video is about here is, you know, majority of the time you'll have your patterns, your normal patterns. You can kind of pattern fish according to the lake that you fish, especially if you know that lake. Uh, this year the pattern has just been completely off. And... You know, as much as you think that there's not a pattern, there's not any rhyme or reason why these fish are doing what they're doing, you're you're dead wrong. There's always a reason why they're doing what they're doing. Now go out and and figure that out. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're just going to be that much better at fishing. But it's been a struggle. Um, I'm by far not an expert or a pro or anything like that. And, you know, I just haven't given up. I've, I've been out as much as I can and just keep grinding and keep grinding and there's days where I just thought nope I'm I'm not going I've had enough and then <clears throat> I force myself to get up and get going and come out here and grind and some days you get some some days it's really really tough but you know today's just a prime example of why to get out and grind I mean it, it paid off today it was a fun day uh, I, I, I wish I had people with me today, but I don't, so that's all right. But, it, you know, long story short, figure them out. You know, they're, they're just like, they're just like, you know, hunting whitetails and, or elk or whatever. You may think they don't have a pattern, but they do. There's some kind of pattern there. There's, there's a reason why they do what they do, and you just got to go figure that out. And as soon as you do, hang on. I mean, things will come a little bit easier once you figure them out. But this year's been a struggle. You know, i got them figured out, except I just can't find where the big ones are at. But, you know, that is what it is. I still enjoy catching fish. So, but I'm going to stop gabbing here. I'm going to start packing my stuff up. The fish kind of died down about 8.30 this morning. I got out here at, oh, I think I'll set up around 5.30, quarter to 6. So I've had a good morning. 
I'm going to pack up and head home, spend some time with the wife and kids, and, and get ready for the week of work. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.